Just wanna be with you. Okay, enough of your singing. Anyway, Fair. um, look who's back. Back again. Par for the course with her attitude. Uh, <laughs> before uh, Fallon returned to the building, she sent us a list of demands. <gasps> um, and uh, we listened to one of the demands. Would you like to go? <gasps> Which one? Things are different for the return. There are things I will be requiring. Your bagel platter is here. Oh my Look at that. Gosh. Fresh bagels. I did request. Yeah, right there. <laughs> I forgot I asked for that. Yeah. In a variety of flavors. That's so I don't see a cinnamon sugar, but. <laughs> I didn't think anybody liked those. Uh, They're downstairs. <laughs> there might be one left downstairs. I was just scared I could say. Roll sticky the, one. <laughs> Rolly open. Here we go. Have a seat. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Everybody. Anybody want any bagels? Anybody want any bagels? Yeah. Well, how many sugar, cinnamon and sugar? That's right, yeah. My goodness, a list of demands. Tomorrow on the show, we're gonna do a whole segment on Fallon's demands. Just everything she listed off. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm so glad you're here, friends. Let's start with this, shall we? As if the Stanley Cup insanity, and we're not talking the hockey thing, we're talking the, the stupid cup. Uh, if, that was, if, the, if, the, if it wasn't already out of control, listen to this. This is no joke. There's a new trend among people who have in-demand Stanley Cups. Yeah, like special edition ones, offering up their big dumb cups for photo sessions. This is not a joke. And you can rent it out for a fee. According, according to our friends at the New York Post, someone on Facebook is offering photos with their cup for $10. No. Someone else, someone, yeah. Someone else says, uh, says selfies will cost more than 100 if you want a selfie with it. Good Lord, I'm only 30. I mean, you know, I just, yeah, the cups themselves typically cost 35 to $50, but can resale for several hundred dollars. I just, I just, I just want to remind people, you do know it's just a cup, right? I just said, yeah, yeah. Roll the music, Leo. Let's start the show. Me? You want to switch chairs? What just? What? She demanded the other chair. Fallon demanded. <laughs> Fallon demanded my chair. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, keep it. It's look, fine. Look how tall I am now. Look, yeah, I know. Did, did you not notice you're a little taller since you last were here? Listen, do you want to switch? Yes, I want to switch. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Oh my! I'm not gonna make her lift it. Okay. First of all, I have been doing some weightlifting, so that's easy. Okay. I'm very strong. Sit I'm down, Shira. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that no, feels better. Does that yeah. feel better? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. How do you sit? Thomas, you're fired. Oh. oh I love Thomas. It's not, don't worry, Thomas. I'm only blaming Fallon. I'm That's only blaming, I'm fair. blaming Fallon yeah. for everything. That's right. That's fair. Thomas is the Thomas would Thomas is the best. He wouldn't do that. Now Aaron Schwab, she might do that. I just yeah yeah. 
She might. She's sneaky. She's sneaky. How you doing? I'm good. It's, it's so fun to be back here. Some things are the same. Yeah. Uh, like Eric welcomed me with a pocket walnut. <laughs> <laughs> photographer Erna. Um, Fallon, we don't eat those. I, I just well, really, I yeah, eat I don't it. eat those I on a photographer Eric. No, um, no, no. But some things are different. Like yeah. you have a hot new security guard. Yeah, we do. That's right. <laughs> we do. Yeah, that's Justin over there. Yeah, um, Justin has been receiving, and I, I'm not liking this. First of all, uh, you come back and the audience claps louder for you than me, and then, and now, hey, front row. I'm, I, well, I'm seeing you front row. Front row went like this. Well, yeah, kind of. Alan is, yeah. And then, and then now the security guard's getting more mail than I am. Yeah. 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 Somebody literally, Eric, get a shot of the hot security guard. Anyway, oh, is the camera broke? Oh, my goodness. Anyway. You know what they say, Jason. Is the camera really oh, broke? Oh, God. We have to blame Fallon for that one, That's too. Fine. Yeah. That's anyway, fine. there we go. Now, Jason, you know yeah. what they say? What? Jealousy is a disease. Get, get a cure, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, we received. There he is right there. <laughs> Guns. <laughs> is Justin giving finger guns? Is this a... Yes, he there is. is. There we go. Right, nice. But uh, no, Fallon, no, yeah. seriously, yesterday, what was it, the mailbag? We did a special, um, we did a special Wednesday mailbag, and somebody wrote in like, ooh la la, who's the new... <laughs> I was here in the audience and this hot guy checked me in. Is he single? And then, so we mentioned it yesterday and Jeff, I walked in and Jeff goes, we got another email about the security oh, guard. So gosh. yeah, he is single. Okay, I was gonna say, what's he the is, answer? Okay. He is single, yeah. Great, okay. Yeah. You're on a, you're on a, you're on a young radio station. Get him a date for heaven's sake. We I don't think he needs help. He doesn't need help. Yeah, no, he doesn't. No. Hey, we also have another, uh, we have another special guest in our audience too, our JVIP grand prize winner. That's Mary. Hi, Mary. How you doing, Mary? Hi. Mary, where are you from, sweetheart? Cold Spring, Minnesota. Oh, I love Cold Spring. We have Look, a really good bakery there. They have a good, oh. what's it called? What's the bakery called? Cold Spring Bakery. Oh. Okay, there we go. There we go. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I mean, That's smart. I mean, yeah. let's, they, they, yeah. they didn't take too long in that meeting. <laughs> We're in Cold Spring. We got baked goods. Uh, yeah. Cold Spring Bakery. There we go. Yeah. Well, along with today's VIP treatment, uh, Mary gets a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture. Yeah. Uh, a $250 gift certificate to Renew Med Spa, and she, yep, and she gets to have margaritas with our security guard. That's right. She is so excited. <laughs> 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 it's the most excited face. <laughs> oh, God. What am I going to do with them? Oh, this is going to be great. Yeah, what? 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 What, Mary? What? Mary, tell them what you said. What do you say, Mary? Well, if we have margaritas, what am I going to do with my three guests? <laughs> oh, they're, they're, they can come with me. They're fine. I'll, I'll take them out. Yeah. Those are your designated Sorry, drivers, Those Mary. are your designated drivers, yeah. <laughs> Let's get started. Leo, activate the hot dish. Let's do this. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Is the we could end the show right now? It's not going to get better than this. Yeah. Uh, let's start uh, remembering a Hollywood favorite. You know, we have to. Sometimes we have to do this. We're starting with sad news today. Actor and comedian Richard Lewis uh, passed away this week from a heart attack. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, he's best known for his regular appearances on Larry David's uh, as Larry David's friend on the HBO mega hit uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Let's look at this. Oh, great. From Rhonda. We need to talk. Uh, I'm through. You're done. Whatever comes good after we need to talk. Nothing. You ever hear this? We need to talk. I'm taking you to Cancun. No, that's not Is that going to happen? No. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Listen. Listen to this. If you guys didn't know this, uh, Lewis and David were actually childhood friends, uh, and they grew up in the entertainment business together. Larry David issued a very Larry David statement uh, saying, Richard had that rare combination of being the funniest person and also the sweetest. Today, he made me sob. For that, 
I'll never forgive him. Um, yeah. Lewis was a really popular stand-up comedian in the 70s and 80s. He was, uh, I know this, this is how, oh, there he is with Johnny, the best. Two of the best right there. He was a regular on a lot of late-night shows, including The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Lewis also appeared on every other late-night show, as well as uh, nearly every daytime show. And I had forgotten about this in the late 80s. Uh, he started in the ABC sitcom Anything uh, But Love with Jamie Lee Curtis. Wow. Yeah, Jamie Lee posted this post on Instagram saying, Lewis is the reason she is sober. Wow. She says he helped her and she'll be forever grateful. Share, yeah, a lot of, a lot of. He was a staple in my house on with Johnny. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. Yeah, that's uh, that's incredibly hard. Um, I feel like for I mean, and this is the last season of Curb Your yes. Enthusiasm too. So what a what a hard time for Larry David, I'm yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. And it's and, and he's in he's in this last season, so we get a, a couple more new moments with Richard Lewis. Yeah. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna check on Mary and the security guard, and we'll be right back. Back in a moment. Stay with us, everybody. Registered at Home Depot. <laughs> Welcome back. Kate Winslet. You can get up now, Justin. Just for TV. Kate, we're not going to get through the show. I don't think I don't we think are. So, yeah. no. Oh, God, I love Mary. Anyway, Kate Winslet is out promoting her new HBO series called The Regime. I think it premieres. Ten, uh, Sunday, yeah. Uh, she was on the Tonight Show Wednesday night and talked about the role that she. You're, this is gonna, might surprise you. The role that she gets recognized for the most. Look. People come up to me in the street more about the holiday and the episode of Extras that I did than Titanic. <laughs> is that right? I promise you. Especially at Christmas. And actually, what's so lovely is that mothers and daughters come up to me in the grocery store and they say, OK, we just love the holiday. <laughs> it's, our, it's our little ritual at Christmas and they have things that they eat every year. Yeah. They sit down, it's a tradition, and I just love that. I, that's something I never would have expected, actually, the sort of mother-daughter connection around a film like that. It's, it's so nice. It's lovely. So nice and lovely. Now, yeah. we've debated on this yeah. because you are more of a Love, love Actually. Love Actually. And yeah. I love Love Actually, but the holidays possibly my favorite movie. It's like up there with Forrest Gump. Really? <laughs> I love Forrest Gump I do so too. much. I love I Forrest love Gump it. too. So, I know. But it's like the holiday is the one that I can watch constant, like all the time and I don't get sick of it. I, we've had this debate. I like it except for Cameron yes, Diaz. That's right. I yeah, think Cameron do. Diaz ruins that movie. But anyway, <laughs> get this. Jimmy Fallon and, sorry audience, uh, Jimmy Fallon and Robert Downey Jr. both auditioned for the holiday in the roles that went to J uh, Jack Black and Jude Law. Hold on. Which one was trying to get the Jude Law part? Uh, Robert Downey Jr. Oh, okay. Robert Downey Jr. I can kind of see that. Kind of, but the scene with Jude Law in the bar when yes. it like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's possibly the most beautiful moment of a man in film. Absolutely. It's like he's so attractive. Yeah. Yeah. It's lovely. I'll do whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll Speak. do. No one asked. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do whatever. <laughs> Just in case he would ask Fallon. <laughs> okay. Fair. <laughs> Speaking of actors getting recognized next in the dish, Carrie Preston. Uh, you, you don't may not know think think you know her, but you know her is one of those character actors known for her memorable roles in shows like My Beloved, The Good Wife, and True Blood. Well, now she stars in her own show on CBS. I'm so I I haven't looked forward to a network show in a long time. This one centered around her character from The Good Wife, Cookie Lawyer Elsbeth Tassioni. Well, Carrie was on the Late Show and talked about the roles that she gets recognized for. Look. 
Yeah, I like to play this little game where I try to guess, you know? Mm -hmm. So they'll say, oh, I love you on that show. And I'll say, oh, I'm so glad that you loved True Blood, you know? Or I'll say, oh, I'm so glad you loved Good, Good Wife. Sometimes I get it right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like swipe left. Nope, not that. Nope, not that. No, nope. you end up going down your entire resume. Um, but one time I was on an a airplane and there were these flight attendants and I saw them talking and I thought, oh, okay, here it comes. And they come over and they say, excuse me, are you a flight attendant on Delta? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No. As I, as I mentioned, Elsbeth uh, premieres tonight on CBS. And I, I still think if I ranked my uh, network shows, the, we, we've talked about this, The Good Wife is one of the uh, top, 15 network shows top 10 of the last 15 years wow it's that it's so good it's a near perfect show only a few bumps but and she she plays kind of if you're, you're my age or older you know Columbo a uh, Columbo was real quirky she's a female Columbo okay she's very odd and it's great and I haven't seen the good wife oh you would you so would Fallon to, you would love it, it. Okay. You, you, it's now it's it's substantial it's a lot but don't let that scare you okay you will I know you well enough you'll love it oh don't worry about like me seeing too many seasons I just listened to 12 books in the last two months because <laughs> of like I binged through series so I will do you'll be fine yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well well I I love this for several reasons first I can't get enough of this next story and also I can't wait to talk about it with this one right here I'm talking about my favorite story of the last month the Willy Wonka chocolate experience <laughs> that went wrong in Scotland. Now, if you're not if you're not familiar, this was what the experience was billed as. Uh, this is what it was supposed to look like. Uh, organizers used AI to sell the experience, mm. promoting chocolate fountains, wow. performances by real Oompa Loompas, <laughs> and a celebration of candy in a magical chocolate factory. And tickets were 45 magical dollars a person. But this is what they got right there. This is what they got right there, yeah. Uh, tape, taped up, dirty, uh, taped up uh, decorations in a dirty warehouse, oh. a few decorations on the floor. Oh. It was so bad, several parents ended up calling the police alleging <laughs> false advertising. Well. well, and my favorite picture from the event is this. Oh. This. This poor woman is a adult Oompa Loompa, and, and no, that's not a meth lab, that's a bar. <laughs> that is, we didn't have the rights to the photo yesterday, and today we do, and that just makes me happy. <laughs> now, the reason we're doing the story again is because the actor play, the, uh, played to hire, uh, hired to play Willy Wonka, talked to a Scottish news program, and he says the actors were conned just as much as the parents. Oh. Now. Yeah, uh, uh, organizers apologized to families and issued a refund. By the way, photographer Eric created a Jason Show uh, interactive experience behind our studio. Uh, let's take a look. It, I haven't seen this. It comes. <laughs> it comes. It comes it comes with a makeshift desk, uh, a photo of former producer Ted, and a knockoff of our Oliver the Otter puppet. Yeah, yeah, yeah there we go. Yeah. That's it. Oh, my God. It. Oh, and I'm hearing, I'm hearing it's $35 oh, for that. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. But audience, yes. the audience that's here today, Fallon and I are going to give you a discount. Yeah. $33.99. There we go. Yeah, yeah. The Willy Wonka thing on my TikTok and my favorite comment about the Willy Wonka, a woman posted, I can tell a man organized this event. <laughs> said, okay, that's cold-blooded. But <laughs> it's so did you talk about it on your radio show? Yeah, but I like I did a TikTok with like green screen where I was like, imagine you spent $45 per child as a mother. Yeah. <laughs> and you walk in. You, I would just be like bleeding out of my eyes. I absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Next in the dish, dream. Come, uh, dreams come true for fans of NSYNC. Justin Timberlake answered one fan's question about an NSYNC reunion on his upcoming album. Now, there isn't any sound to this, but just watch him. Watch this. Yes, 
Now the question was, blink twice if there's in sync music coming. So he blinked twice. Uh, Justin confirmed the guys will reunite on his new album, singing a song called Paradise. Now this comes just months after they got back together on Fallon's favorite uh, Trolls Band Together soundtrack for the song Better Place. <laughs> Justin's latest album comes out in a couple weeks on March 15th. Popular album in your house, I hear. I have a four-year-old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo, we listen to a lot of the same stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Trolls, trolls, trolls. Trolls, yeah. Sometimes she'll switch up and say, rocker trolls today. And I'm like, oh, thank you. There's a change from, you know, the three soundtracks. But I have every word to that song memorized. Were you an NSYNC fan? I was. I liked NSYNC, yeah. I'm not as big of a Justin Timberlake fan. Yeah. Next up. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. Next up, uh, a new face for the hit show Queer Eye on Netflix. Now, you may, uh, might remember this. Bobby Burke announced that he was leaving the show last year. Well, yesterday, Netflix announced HDTV designer and husband of Nate Burkus. My mom is going to be very excited about this. <laughs> Jeremiah Brent will be taking over design duties on the show. Well, he already... Yeah. He already hosts two shows with Nate on HGTV and competes on, I love this show, the reality competition show Rock the Block. Filming on season nine of Queer Eye uh, begins this spring. He, look, I want to be fair. I, 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 I like Jeremiah more than I like Nate. Nate left, just being honest, again, we call balls and strikes here on the show. Um, we were very excited to welcome Nate here and wasn't very nice. And so... Uh, okay. He was very, okay, fine. I, I, Jeff goes, say cold instead. It's the same thing. I mean, <laughs> cold, and not, cold and not very nice. Mm -hmm. He was a little, like a Dairy Queen freezer. You know what I mean? It was a little chilly. <laughs> um, so I don't want to hold that against Jeremiah. Um, but he has the tough, now this is where I want to be fair to him. He has the toughest role on that show. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. He's building things. Right. I mean, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, Karamo's having conversations. Uh, <laughs> a, a tan is taking people to Banana Republic. Uh, you know, <laughs> and, and Anthony's making mozzarella sticks. Oh, you know, it's, he has the toughest job. So I'm going to give him a break and give him a chance. Well, that's nice of you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Do you watch where I? Yeah. I, I watched the first season, but I haven't watched it since. Yeah, so I've fallen off, I guess. Do you like Jeremiah? Do you know anything about Jeremiah? No, I don't. Yeah. But I'll jump on board and judge with you if you'd like. Perfect. Yeah, let's okay. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Just saying. I just, I like, I like this. Show. I just like Bobby. I'm gonna miss. But it's hard. But you know, that show's an ensemble. Yeah. So you can remove one and put someone else in there, and it won't ruin the show. Okay. The rest of them are still, still good. Yeah. So we're gonna take a break. Stay right there. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> in just a little bit. Meet the woman behind a fantastic and fascinating new series called Me Hereafter. And then, we love her too, social media superstar and queen of the hacks. <laughs> and I mean Trader Joe's hacks, Lisa Breckenridge is back with another fantastic recipe. That and more when The Jason Show continues. Welcome back, everyone. Something new for fans of true crime shows like My Mama. Uh, a new series premieres today following four cases. But here's the deal. This is why it's different. Each episode is told from the perspective of the victim. Look. My mom was terrified. I said, maybe she's been taken. Mom instincts should be trusted. I need a Kleenex. Sorry. I hate it when people lie. All we need is the truth. But I love it when they get caught. They left me there to die. What a sick, twisted person. Drives me crazy thinking about how she felt. A family shouldn't have to go through that. What police were about to find out were things no one expected. This is me. This is me. This is me hereafter. Me Hereafter follows four different cases taking viewers inside murder investigations like never before. One of the cases in the series is the tragic death, uh, and this one hits close to home for us here in the Twin Cities, a uh, real estate agent, uh, Monique Bao. Well, back in 2019, she was lured to a fake house showing, kidnapped, 
and then killed. Uh, joining me this morning is the woman behind me hereafter, filmmaker Maria Oz, and the mother of Monique, uh, who is now my dear friend, uh, who is featured on the show. Give it up for Wanda Williams Bauer. Thank you. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Wanda Love, I, 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 if we can get some Kleenex, please. Yes, please. I want to, <laughs> um, I want to ask you first. Yes. Um, first of all, thinking of you. Thank you. Um, I love her and respect her. I, I gotta. I want to ask. With that, was it a hard decision? Because it is. I, I would trust. If I would trust anybody, it would be her to tell the story of your beloved daughter. But was it a hard decision to put this out there again? Because you lived it on the news and you lived it in real life. What was that process like for you? You know, it was a, actually became an easy process after I had a conversation with Maria. Um, I was contacted by um, other networks to do the story. And one thing I've learned through the process is that they can tell your story whether you will have a, agreed to it or not. And um, so they can, however, Maria, I feel I made the right choice going with her company um, because I think they're, what, you know, told it the best. What did you want? What did you want all of us to get out of it about about Monique? What did you want us to get out of it? That she was not just a headline, and um, that she mm. was a mother, a daughter, a granddaughter, niece, cousin, friend. She was so loved. Thank you. She was so loved, and she loved being a mother, and she had the right to live her life and she had a right to raise her children and what happened to her was senseless and should have never happened to anyone. Um, but yeah, I just felt like the, I wanted the story to know that she was a real person and not just a headline. A headline, I mean, yeah. I always think about that, yeah. having been an anchor, a graphic. A gra a, 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 there's a story behind a graphic that you mm -hmm. see of just the name Monique. I, yeah, Absolutely. Maria, what was it, um, you've been on the show before, mm -hmm. what was it um, about doing this series, what what was it appealing to you that you were going to be telling uh, the stories through the point of view of the victims? Yeah, I mean, I think that you know, throughout the history of the different true crime shows we've done, one of the things we've always tried to do is bring attention to the victim stories over that of the perpetrators. You know, those are the people that we really want to remember. Those are the people who touch our lives, right? So when we were able to do this with ABC News Studios and bring this to Hulu, I think it's the ultimate opportunity to kind of give a voice to these people who were lost, and we work very hard on that to try to um, work with families to try to strike you know the right chord in terms of that because you know it's got that very lovely if you've read the lovely bones it's got that yeah. very lovely bones um, style to it is it hard for you I asked on a personal level with Wanda but for you is it hard to go home at, uh, you know what I'm gonna ask yeah. is it hard to go home at night and not be overcome by you're not just you're telling Monique and Wanda's story, but you have, you're overcome with, you're so deep into all of these stories. Is it hard to release that at night? It can be, you know, I think um, more so actually with this show than even others we've done mm. in the past. And I think that's because, and you know, Wanda and I, I think became quite close actually throughout this process because we really are trying to get to know these people and that's where it, it hits home you know and um, having kids myself and you know you think through all of these different things but you do have to you know kind of try to find a way to sort of shut it off but you never can all the way you know this is close to home for all of us again you know we we, we are based here in Minneapolis the Jason show is these these stories correct me if I'm wrong are all rather locally based here they are they're all in the Midwest so we have a case from um, Monique's case in Minneapolis we have a st. Paul case Kara Steger we have um, years back 2002 the Hudson funeral home murders I don't know if anyone in your mm -hmm. audience may remember that case um, and then we have the case of Savannah Greywind which is in Fargo and that one really brings some attention to the missing and murdered indigenous women's uh, women uh, horrible situation so I think that they all have a different um, appeal I think and a different different message for viewers Wanda, I want to I want to return to you because again the the show has a has a, a role in doing this but I, I wanted to ask you I you know if I asked my mom like what what's a favorite thing about me I'm she could list off goofy things mm. what was your favorite I I, cause I always want to bring it back to Monique I want to make sure what was your favorite thing about your daughter oh my goodness <laughs> um, hanging out with her and she was funny 
she she was a foodie. Was she oh a foodie? My goodness, she was a huge foodie. Um, beef tartare. I had never heard of it, um, but she introduced it to me. Um, just just she was just a loving person. She was so fun. Yeah, she was so fun. She would light up a room. Would you? Uh, I want to focus too on some oh, yes. positive. Yes. Um, well, tell everyone about your book. <laughs> um, Ruby and Onyx and the Magical Pillow Adventure. Um, Monique's girls and I wrote this book. Um, we were had spent many nights reading other people's books, and we decided to write our own after we were telling some stories to each other. So, Ruby and Onyx and the Magical Pillow Adventure is about a pillow that um, Monique uh, is, you know. Um, that Monique had that we would read the stories and all of a sudden the girls would fall asleep on it together and then they would go on this adventure. So it was fun. The girls actually really put, had a hand in it. So it was, it, it turned out great. How are they doing? They're doing wonderful. Monique would be so proud of them. Oh. They had their first oh. piano lesson yesterday. Wait, wait, wait. They, got, they had their first piano lesson? <laughs> their first piano lesson yesterday and then they had a oh. drum set that was there and they both were like, can we do the drums? And it, it, their teacher, Ben, was like, sure, yeah. So we, they got a chance to beat on the drums a little bit. So yeah, I think they're gonna love it. Oh, yeah, I love they it. did so great. I love it. Yeah. One, more, one more question. Is there, sure. um, are they released, is Hulu dropping them all at once? Yes, so you can like, you know, when your show is over, obviously. Thank you. But Thank then, you, Maria. Yes, yeah. then you can uh, go on Hulu and you can stream them all. They're all there, all four. Are we gonna, episodes. do you think we're gonna get another season of this? Event? Well, I mean, that's my hope. Hulu, you know? give her another season. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Give it up for Maria and Wanda, everybody. Thank you. Again, go watch this. Me Hereafter is streaming now. It premieres right now. Like, go watch it. Well, like Maria said, please watch our show and then <laughs> go stream it. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you so much. Come here, sweetheart. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Well, the last time our next guest was on, many of you, including me, uh, loved her hack for easy wonton soup. I made it, I think, that night. Uh, it was so good. Joining me live once again from L.A. is lifestyle blogger from HappilyLisa.com. I happily say, audience, give it up for my buddy, Lisa Breckenridge. Hi, sweetheart. Take a bow, lovely. Take a bow. Yes, I will. How you doing? How you doing, <laughs> so sweetie? So good to see you. So good to I'm see you. I'm great. I'm actually cooking for you, and then I'm hopping on the plane to Knoxville, and my dogs are barking because, like magic of television, that's going to happen. <laughs> I love it. Well, we're going to cook uh, a new one a little bit later, but I got to tell you, um, and I got to ask you, we had such a reaction, and I know you saw it on your social. We had such a reaction from Jason Show fans about your Trader Joe's wonton soup hack. Were you surprised at the reaction? You know what? No, because I've seen how your audience is, and so therefore I am not surprised. Your yeah. audience is probably one of the loveliest audiences, yeah. and I saw it after each recipe I've done. So, I mean, that's a true testament to you and the crew and everything that you guys do there on a daily basis. But I will tell you, so I, I originally posted it. It had like half a million views, and then I reposted it for you guys, and it got another nearly half a million views. Yeah. And it was really sweet to see the people posting their versions and tagging me and tagging you. And that just makes me so happy because it's that, you know, I think you and I are a little bit the same. We yes. like that, um, that immediate gratification and acknowledgement <laughs> that thank you for doing something, you know? Yeah. I made it, Leo, director Leo's gonna roll. I made it, Lisa. I made it, I made like a triple batch so we could eat it for a few days and I made it like you recommended. I did it soupier, I did more broth and I'm not mm -hmm. kidding, in my house, I'm the cook. I think it's, Colin said it's one of the, it's the best things that I've ever made for him. And I'm like, well, credit Lisa Breckenridge. <laughs> I didn't do it, I didn't, yeah. Well, it was, it was do, so good. I do love Colin. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, okay, we're, like I said, we're gonna cook with Lisa a little bit, but I, I don't want to lose sight and it's it's timely I always want to remind people Lisa had a whole life be before she became a social media superstar for years she was I mean like the grand dame of LA television on Good Day LA on our Fox affiliate there and you've interviewed every celebrity known to man as we get to Oscar week and we start talking moments like being on camera and not really realizing 
uh, that Gene Simmons is coming up behind you and sticking his tongue in your ear. Like, <laughs> little things like that. That would be odd. Um, singing with Rick Springfield, interviewing Kevin Costner, who is so lovely. Um, and, oh my gosh, <laughs> singing with him. I mean, can you imagine getting a chance to sing with, uh, with Stevie? I mean, just a legend. Of course, Mindy Kaling, so darling. And, um, oh my gosh, I know you love, I know you love Kristen Chenoweth. You just want to grab her and put her in your pocket. And she's just so darling. Uh, oh, Arsenio Hall made me come sit on his lap because that's normal. Um, I will t- and he's lovely. But I will tell you, I'm, everyone always wants to know, like, the strangest, strangest thing that I had. And it, it was actually, there were many, but um, Bill Cosby, before anyone knew anything about Bill Cosby, I had to do a segment with him and they made me come up to his dressing room. And then he kept saying, sit closer, sit closer. And then he wanted to know, we were doing this thing for Jello, And so he wanted to know what my inspiration was going to be for my giggle. And I'm like, I don't know, I'm just going to laugh. And he goes, no, 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 get closer, get closer. He made me get closer and then told, proceeded to tell me the most inappropriate story. And I'm sitting there with him and his people thinking, what is going on with Dr. Huxtable? Because we had never heard of any of the crazy um, and, and the horrible things. And so, yeah, that would be a strange one. Liam Neeson yelled at me one time. I mean, you just you oh. can't make this stuff up. Oh, we got to have Lisa back just for a whole segment on this. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, but when we come back, when we come back, you're not going to want to miss it. Another Lisa Breckenridge easy meal hack. This time it's a pasta dish. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. and bake for 25 to 30 minutes at 400 degrees. At the same time, cook your pasta according to the directions and save some of that pasta water for later. Yep, now that's just the beginning. Welcome back, everybody. That is the... That is the start of Lisa Breckenridge's simple and delicious one pan pesto chicken pasta dish. Well, welcome back. Lisa joins me again to talk more about her latest Trader Joe's meal hack. Take it away, my friend. Okay, I know you're gonna love this one. Um, my son had three helpings of it, and for him to like something, it's a big thing. So I'm gonna move my camera down a little bit because you know we're not like in an actual studio, so this way you can actually see what I'm doing. So I just, you know, I have a pan, and this is the chicken I use. It is so easy to use, and I've already opened it because, of course, no one wants to look at chicken. But this has been marinated in pesto sauce, and so. It just already has all that goodness locked in. Now, of course, if you wanted homemade pesto, I have a great recipe for that on my website, Happily Lisa, as well. Okay, so you're just, that's like the toughest stuff that you have to do because no one wants to touch the chicken, right? So no. we'll re- make sure my hands are good and washed. And next we go with the tomatoes that have been washed. We just put these in spread them around, and then literally that is it. If you wanted to drizzle a little more olive oil on, you could. Then we're gonna pop it over here in the oven. And of course, due to the television magic that we have, we're gonna pop out the one that I've already baked for you. TV magic, Lisa, TV magic. (laughs) It smells so, so good. Oh, that looks great. You see, it gets nice and juicy, just the way we like it. I've already cut the chicken. Um, just for time um, for you. So you just cut the chicken into bite-sized pieces, and then it's just really a matter of layering on the other things. So we're going to go ahead and take the spinach, take a whole bag. And this is what I like about these because you're getting in all your vegetables, and it's all going to wilt down once you get everything on top. And then I've already done the pasta, and I'm going to give you a little tip. Save your pasta water because you definitely will need that if you want to make it a little saucier. And then I also always put a little butter in my pasta. My mom always put butter on everything, and so I kind of got that trait from her. And then you're going to go ahead and take your burrata. I love burrata. I love burrata. And this is fun because you can do this with your kids and just, like, really kind of break it up and get it all around. Oh, and God. then, because you know I like things a little spicy, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and put some um, pepper flakes on. 
because I think pepper flakes make everything better. Yes. And so just put those on and then we're just going to mix it up. And obviously, um, I should have used a bigger pan, but this will all get me. <laughs> that would have been nice if I had thought about doing that. But this just mixes up. Now you can use any type of pasta. I use the capellini because again, when I think of making stuff with kids, you, you know, they like the fun shapes. And my kids always liked um, that fusilia, rather. I use capellini in the video I made for you guys. Yes. But this is the um, fusilli. And so you just start to get it all mixed up. You break up the tomatoes, you get the juice. If you need a little bit of the pasta water when you've drained your pasta, it looks just like this. You can pour a little bit more of that in to give a little more of a sauce. And then I like to always take a little extra Parmesan. And put it and on top. Don't you love how, yeah, sprinkle it on top. So you just go like that. And then let's go ahead and put it in our bowl. I hope someone made this for you, Jason. Please tell me that you have um, something there or that you your uh, well, studio audience has some food. Well, um, here's, here's the deal. Um, executive producer Jeff was going to make it, but he did not. So I'm making it, yeah. Okay. He yeah. was, Jeff was very. Well, so disappointing me. I know. <laughs> I, he was very busy on a date. So I, I'm going to, yeah. Now that I would like to hear more about. <laughs> I, there you go, you I'm just kidding, Lisa. He was at home watching Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. It's fine. He wasn't, it's not what he was doing. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, interviewed her as well. Lovely, <laughs> lovely, lovely. And she gave me advice because we both have twins. As you know, I have twins. So. <laughs> Lisa I, I Breckenridge just... for the win, everybody. That's yeah, fantastic. I, I name dropped oh. again. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry I, about that. No, I love it. And at least, can, is that good refrigerated and reheated, honey? Right? Oh, I'm leaving, so my son is going to eat this for the next four days when I'm gone. So, yes, it definitely lasts. It definitely oh, lasts. We love you and appreciate you. Thank you, Lise. Mm. I'll see you soon. Love you guys, too. I hope so. You can check out all of Lisa's videos on Instagram and TikTok. Her handle is at Lisa Breckenridge and her website, happilylisa.com. It's great. It's accessible stuff. Um, Lisa looks real fancy, but she's real. I just adore her and you're going to love all of her hacks and she's just a great human. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> and up to $20 of free play at our partner Grand Casino. You can sign up uh, when you get your tickets for The Jason Show at eventbrite.com. Remember, it's completely free. Uh, so sign up today and come see us. We're going to take a break. We'll wrap up the show after this. Back in a moment. We don't even... Stay right there on that. Stay on that shot right there. Okay. Now let me just let me just point out my friend right there. She has a Jason Show birthday sash. It's not her birthday, but she's still here. That's right. Yeah, yeah. We gave her a mug. That's right. We have. Thank you. There we go. I've missed that. The ceremonial Kendall or uh, uh, what's your name? Fallon, Fallon stands on the. Nice uh, to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Fallon stands on the box. No, no. If you're new, we pick on each other. You should hear the stuff that we call each other, right, Lovely? I have never. Whatever. Hi. It's funny. So we laugh. You know, uh, Fallon filled in for several months when Kendall was on maternity leave, and we do have a. There's a box now. Leo, pull out just a little bit. Uh, we're going to show our magic tricks here. There we go. So you can see that Fallon and Mary over here uh, asked if she, uh, our JVIP, if she could take the box home with her. I go, why, Mary? And she goes, I'm going to need it for my date with the security guard. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's, he's, very, he's very tall. He's very, Mary, we'll give it to you. We'll give it to you, honey. That's right. No, and Mary, look at this, Fallon. Mary made me a little coaster for, for my desk Aww. to put my coffee oh, cup. So yeah. Nice. Did you uh, did you get the crew anything for your return or anything or no? Uh, so how have you been? <laughs> <laughs> Fallon, Fallon was backstage during a commercial mm -hmm. break and Fallon goes, do I get paid for this? <laughs> like you can try to submit an invoice. I don't know. I can't guarantee Fox is going to give it to you. Yeah. Tomorrow, TikTok superstar that Midwestern mom returns to celebrate a big milestone. Plus uh, my new favorite segment, head scratching headlines.
That's tomorrow, but right now that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thanks to Mary, thanks to our security guard, and thanks to you. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. You may, you may come down off the... <laughs>